There's a number of organizations that make recommendations on best practices for psychological assessment. Um, among those are the American Psychological Association. They have some ethical guidelines that uh, spell out, you know, what are the obligations of test users or assessment users as well as the publishers. Um, in other countries, such as the United Kingdom and in South Africa, they have a, a more stringent review process to have an instrument certified as a psychometric tool that meets certain qualifications. That's not done in the United States. Um, but there are still those guidelines. In addition, there's the uh, what we call the standards for educational and psychological testing, which is a joint publication um, of the American Psychological Association, the American uh, Education Research Association, and the National Council on Measurement Education. And this also lays out what kinds of things um, test publishers, legitimate test publishers should do and have in their manuals, what kind of documentation of reliability and validity, as well as the um, requirements for users. And then finally, when you're dealing with a selection context, the Equal Employment Opportunities Commission, uh, particularly in the Uniform Guidelines from 1978, as amended, as well as a number of other statutes, indicate how um, all sorts of information that is considered to be an assessment is used in the context of hiring. The key takeaway um, from this is that there are lots of things out there and at the end of the day, legitimate publishers will publish information about the reliability and validity of their instrument as well as where it should be used and for what purposes. Um, and, in the, and, and the end users of the assessment should be you know, qualified to use them and stay within the boundaries of their own competence.